Welcome to the Lila Life Show. I'm your host, Linda Andrews, and you've tuned in to the right place to up-level in your life and business. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Lila Life Show. This is your host, Linda Andrews, and I am excited for an intimate episode I have for you guys today. Uh, I'm going to be taking myself through the transformations in consciousness with some sharing of the experience I've just gone through over the past year or so. And I really hope my intention for this recording is that it may open your eyes and mind to something that you need. Uh, Maybe there's a part of yourself that you can relate to. Uh, This could also be a catalyst in some ways for your own healing, your own insights. So bear with me as we navigate this uh, conversation. As I've mentioned, we have some really powerful episodes rolling out over the next few weeks and months uh, from the vagus nerve to magnesium deficiency to uh, using food as medicine, some really, really powerful transformational episodes. We also have Sophia and Erica coming into the mix as you've heard from them in the past. Uh, Erica has a really exciting group program she's rolling out in July and August, depending on when you're listening to this, 2021. Uh, If it's in 2022 that you're listening, I'm sure she has some goodness going on also. And uh, we have Sophia, who right now, I'm not certain how much longer, um, I would say you could safely receive this through the end of July, but she is offering three free coaching sessions. She has a heart built for service as we all do and really, really, really wants to uh, work with people right now, especially during the past year or so that we've all been navigating uh, to help them use their mindset, to help them step into this radical transformation that they can find themselves in. So if Either of these things, you want more information, email office at lilalife.co, and we will get that over to you. So for today's episode, I want to start by saying, just giving a little context, okay? And like I said, my hope is not, is to share in a way that is inspiring. This is not to get a pity party or to dredge up a bunch of stuff or to overshare or to make you feel like I have something wrong with me. It is to share in a way that you can relate. Maybe you see parts of yourself in, maybe there's things that are triggering and that's information of uh, an opportunity area. I love triggers as opportunity areas. So in 2020, January before I got married, I went to a powerful breathwork class. It was transformational breath, Uh, shout out to Jamar. He's amazing practitioner. And I had hosted a girls weekend. It was me and three other, you know, really dynamite women in business. And we had this sacred little girls weekend. And really the intention was to bring in 2020, uh, a decade personally, I was feeling really, really excited for, still am. And we had this beautiful weekend of idea sharing, collaborating, and this breathwork session was in it. And at the end of the breathwork, I felt this just complete powerful energy move through me of release and what the short version would be just really having some insights around sexual trauma. And I was asking Jamar like, Hey, is this what just happened? And he, he said something along the lines of it's time to claim back your power. And I felt that I felt that in like every cell of my being. And it was a little weird timing. I must say I was getting married a month later and I was like, oh shit, like, shouldn't I process some of this a little deeply before I'm like going into this amazing commitment with my amazing husband. And, you know, I, I definitely did processing work over those next say four to six weeks and we got married and a month into our marriage, as you all know, we were faced with a pandemic and still have challenges that are associated with that, certainly. Um, so well, let's pause the story there. And I want to share another story. And for anyone that relates to trauma, what I'm about to say may really hit home. Okay. I was in Paris during the terrorist attacks that were a few years ago. And 
we flew in that day and they happened that night. And that night there was um, several shootings that took place, mass shootings. And what was interesting was we were getting our news through Twitter or Facebook. That's how we actually heard about it from people in the US having watched the news. But each one got closer. So picture eating dinner or don't picture, but just hear me out here, uh, eating dinner and you're getting Twitter updates about a mass shooting and each one is getting closer to the destination you're in. It's the first time you're in France and you're with a friend and like a couple strangers out to dinner. Okay. Um, I had a friend text me that night and said, where's your out? And he was like, check the doors, know your escape route. And that thinking, you know, it was really insightful because I had never really thought that way. And that's like a life skill tool that I can use forever now. Uh, and we were safe. And, you know, within hours, we were able to leave the restaurant and go to a hotel that we weren't staying at that was highly uh, securitized. And long story short, we left Paris like after a day and came back to U.S., and it was a pretty traumatic experience. I'm laughing the like awkward trauma laugh. Um, but what I noticed in that experience was I became really addicted to the next bad thing that was going to happen. And for weeks, if not months, there was this trauma loop of like, check my phone, check all the news. And it was a control mechanism. It was wanting to control outcomes and feel really safe. And I'm not going to get into a lifetime of what got me there, but you could imagine there were certainly things that got me to that processing moment. And uh, EMDR, side note, was a really powerful tool to work through some of this. Well, fast forward to 2020 and that same pattern started. And for me, every day started to feel like that terrorist attack experience where like I was certain that the world was going to fall maybe out of the sky or I don't even know something kind of crazy and this became my big new invitation and I got glimpses of a lot of clarity through the past year year and a half uh, and I had major setbacks and I'm only able to talk about this now because it was so much to process Early on in the experience of the pandemic, I received a download. And when I say download, I just mean like intuition, clear, clear, clear messaging. And it was saying like, you've got to come into acceptance of everything. And at that moment, you know, there's all this speculation about origin and, and all these things that I care not to get into right now. But what I do care to say is that no matter how you shake it or what the origins are or how we got here, we are here. And for me, wanting to know exactly how and and from the exactly how to what's happening, there was a lot of control in that and a desire for safety. So I can see clearly now, oh, wow, like that was me just wanting to feel so safe and really understand. It was me wanting to take what I know about my body and my system and feel safe in a really uncertain time. And I think in that thought is a lot of compassion because there's a lot of people still in this exact moment, maybe you relate to this, you are one of them, that are in some kind of need for safety, wanting to feel in a seat of control and uh, certainty. And I have just so much compassion for that because I understand. And I think at a, like a human needs level, we may all want to have that experience on some level. Uh, and we started to notice, you know, instead of instead of like, hey, go out and live today, it was like, hey, get out there and be safe today. And as a society and as a world, it to me, it was like a realignment of values, right? Instead of living, we're, we're valuing safety over living. I am not here to say that's right or wrong. I do believe that there's 8 billion-ish people that all have different perspectives on what their values are. And so this becomes this invitation to compassion to wherever we may find another one. 
Um, so acceptance was the first like major download and even love, like it's uncomfortable sometimes to say this because the love piece is so intense. Like you're going to love what's going on. It's not that you need to, you know, want more of it, but it's like, when I say the love, maybe it's this compassion piece to it, but this acceptance became very clear. Part two to this, this fear as the illusion, right? How cliche, but what started to happen to me over the year was I was seeing fear. I was seeing this addicted addiction to information as a need for safety and control. But what I saw also when I would have a lot of clarity was this fear as illusion. I would really feel it like, oh, I am safe in this exact present moment, but I am taking in all this information that makes me feel unsafe and scared. And on some level, I'm doing this to myself and I'm on that loop again and again and again and again. Um, it like the veil of fear, the debilitating veil of fear, I can almost not put into words. Fear of anything can be paralyzing. <laughs> so I got to start seeing how for myself, oh my gosh, I'm rubbing up against all the what ifs, paralyzing myself in life and, um, and, and on this loop again and again. The next point I have is to talk about processing emotion and the power of this. But if you ever wanted to see how many triggers you have, I think this past 12 to 18 months was a great opportunity to look at your triggers. And I say this with compassion, but our triggers are our responsibility. And I see this on social media. I see this in boundary setting. I see this where people almost want, and I've done this. So I've seen this because I've seen it myself. People want to like make other people responsible for our triggers. So our triggers are there because of trauma. And when I say trauma, it may not be some big event one time. It may be these low grade, what we can call complex trauma, which you're welcome to research. But this complex trauma that's like a low grade fever that compounded from literally before your mom was born. So then you have an opportunity like the past year or so where there's all these triggers relating and connecting back to this complex trauma that unwound over the course of time of your lifetime. In a different breathwork session, <laughs> Mac dab in the pandemic, shout out to Tracy lit. Hopefully we can get her on the show soon. Um, I'm in this breathwork session on zoom and I get this other clear message come through that says trauma does not discriminate. And this can be a provocative thing to say. I am certainly think that equality and equity and a, a, re, a, a shifting, a regeneration of how the world works, certainly from a social justice lens is important now more than ever, because when I say more than ever, we're in this present moment. But this trauma doesn't discriminate peace can allow us to have so much compassion for all of humanity. And I see a pendulum swinging and I certainly can relate to the experience of white privilege, uh, but there's this almost like you need to feel weird that you're white, quote unquote, right? And I don't, I'm not gonna dive into this right now. I would love to continue this conversation on longer and further, but there's this like, and it's, it's generated from a place of shame. Um, we're all beautiful, amazing beings that have every single one of our trillion cells making us up to be the expression of me. There will never be another Linda. There'll never be another you. Uh, you are your exact perfect makeup. There is no part of you that needs to be in any experience of shame and any energy that is wanting you to feel otherwise, I would like to challenge because I think that's rooted in fear and certainly these disempowering energies. So this, this trigger opportunity, trauma doesn't discriminate. 
and owning the triggers and understanding from a place of security and safety to connect back to the complex trauma and start to heal. And that was really the message of this trauma doesn't discriminate is the invitation for everyone to experience healing. This word healing, it just like reverberates to my core. I think there is always healing for us to step into and do if we so choose. And our bodies are the ones often signaling us of that. So this invitation through our triggers to process emotion powerfully, I mentioned Tracy Litt, she teaches a powerful exercise where you're screaming into your uh, crevice of your arm. You've heard me mention this before, I'm sure. Uh, another one, there's a powerful Kundalini exercise that I'm hyped on right now. It's a uh, processing anger by doing reverse fists, uh, fist, we'll call it like fist circles and you do bring a fire breath and you feel angry for five minutes and allow the anger and the emotion to move through. So this invitation to process emotion. And this question this is a powerful journaling question or practice question. What is this fear loop keeping me from? Everything I'm sharing with you is what I just experienced and, and can be on the other side of to share. Certainly I share this with my clients to relate to in their own way. Um, but what is this fear loop keeping me from? So crazy, but I started realizing that I had so much like fear of marriage. This sounds weird, but just truly like we could call it societal fear, um, whatever. Like as a woman who wants female equality or equity, it's like, what is what am I going to lose in my identity? Maybe even watching not only my parents as my caretakers, but just watching society's take on marriage. I think the average marriage is, I found this out after I got married, the average marriage is uh, eight, eight years in America. And like in the whole thing of marriage was the possibility for like a lot of shame, I guess. And for me, this fear loop, right? Like this doomsday approach to, oh my gosh, uh, you know, what's about to happen? What's about to happen? What's about to happen? I found was directly related to this other fear I couldn't even handle <laughs> facing is like this, like, Om, omnibus, like cloud of like, what if, what if this marriage is a failure or whatever? And so that was what the fear loop was keeping me from and keeping me safe from was facing that. Uh, certainly what I'm sharing with you put strain on our marriage, probably a lot of relationships, uh, because it was a really intense space to be in. You know, if you know someone in your life that is just that afraid all the time of something bad happening, they're living in a PTSD state. And this is looping to either like solo traumas or complex trauma. Uh, it can be really hard to live. So I, I was experiencing this and, you know, it's like facing these fears face on and it's like, oh, I married an amazing guy of great discernment. We're awesome communicators. No, everything isn't sunshine and roses, but it actually like a lot of times is. And uh, it was almost like my own beliefs cycles were coming up to be healed in that. So what is this fear loop coming, keeping me from, you know, you may still find yourself in this trauma state or in this PTSD straight state or in this fear state or in this desire for extreme safety state, or you may not, or you may not relate to this at all, but this is a powerful question. What is the fear loop keeping me from? I've talked about trauma. Uh, I, I, I cannot express this enough follow your own little intuitive seeds, but I promise as a human to other humans, there is work to do on the trauma front. And it may sound scary. The word has a lot. I think this word packs a lot of weight that makes the work inaccessible. Um, but I, and, and I had one of the most beautiful conversations with my mom and she ask me one day, like, can you keep me posted on how this goes? She was like feeling like I was going on this like adventure into the jungle or something. And I'm like, have my machete. And my mom's like, let me know how the trip goes when you go back. That's what it felt like me embarking on the trauma and can still feel like going through it. When you are facing the experience of unpacking your trauma, I certainly recommend the support of someone, maybe a therapist, maybe a coach that focuses on this specifically 
Uh, maybe you have a great inner circle, but not everyone is going to get what you're going through and that's okay. It is not for them to need to get everything you're going through. It's for you to get everything you're going through. And this can bring up frustration because it's like, you may want to word vom everything that you're going through and share. And it's exciting if you're like me. Um, but some people may not be wanting to go on every play-by-play -play journey of that with you. Journaling is a really powerful tool. Being committed to the work is a really powerful tool. So within the past six months, I'm starting to see, oh my gosh, I have an issue. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the next worst thing that's going to happen. I'm like living on a trauma loop and I was creating massive amounts of stress for myself, like the most massive amounts of stress for myself. Also, I had expansive growth in the business quick and then some pretty expansive pullback quick, which I had to address for the first time ever in a bigger way. Um, the book, The Body Keeps the Score, talks a lot about how we hold trauma into our being. And at some point, this wants to come out. And it wants to come out as not what we'd want it to come out as. It comes out as pain, sickness, illness, injury. And that's where I was starting to get to. It was like, oh my gosh, I'm really sick. So for about 10 years, I've experienced migraines on and off for different levels of intensity, frequency, et cetera. The first one I got was literally 10 years ago and I went to the hospital. I was so freaked out and I feel like my boyfriend at the time, like I think I had him come meet me. I was like freaked out. I thought I was dying. And they were like, you have a migraine. And I was just like, what? And that was when I was studying for my series seven, you know, just onboarding in my finance career. And it was really stressful. And for the decade since up to last week, I've experienced these migraines. And last week I knew they were hormonal and I'm going to, I'm not oversharing, I'm sharing. So if periods wig you out, sorry, uh, sorry, not sorry. Sunday had a migraine creep in like at a vengeance Monday, Tuesday, feeling great Wednesday night, creeping back in again, Thursday, completely knocked out and Friday got my cycle. And it's like a humbling thing because say on a Thursday when you can't do anything for me, like I can't do anything. It's like clearing the schedule, getting in with any of the energy workers I can get into it, it, in with as an SOS. And it sucks. It really sucks. And for whatever reason, I just felt so receptive to this moment where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm still having hormonal migraines. And then I started doing the math. And the math is that if I have a hormonal migraine at the cadence I was, I was missing a month and a half a year of my life in pain. And that feels like a lot of time. Like I went to Bali for a month. That was epic. Like a month in of migraines, not so epic. And there's an app called Curable that uses some subconscious work to reprogram pain. So I started diving into that. Uh, you've probably heard me mention uh, the 2B Magnetic work. I, I'm a big fan of Lacey Phillips and her team at 2B Magnetic and the deep imaginings and the subconscious work that they have available there. And if you haven't read Woman Code, read it. And then the next sequel is In the Flow. And I love to buy books on like the waiting list and then get them when they actually release. So I've had this book for months. I don't know exactly when I got it. I think like April or before April. Didn't start reading it. And, and truly, I would say that it was like denial. Denial of this issue. And headaches, funny enough, are either number one or two of the like biggest disabilities American American workforce faces. And I just became really receptive and I became available to something new for me with this experience. 
And I'm going to go on a little journey with you right now, talking about cycle syncing for a moment. But I want to just talk about women and men. I mentioned my amazing husband. I have a dad and brother and uncle and family members and brother-in-law, father-in-law, et cetera. These amazing men in my life. And I have some amazing women in my life also, some real fucking amazing women, like my mom and my mother-in-law and my sister-in-laws and so on. And my girlfriends, I mean, so many amazing men and women and, and people that identify on the gender spectrum, wherever they identify amazing humans. I want to take a moment to address men and women biologically, how their days are different. And wherever you identify biologically, you may find this insightful. This is a PSA announcement, okay? Men have a 24-hour clock that their hormone cycle is operating on. Women experience that same 24-hour clock, and they also have a second clock. That's a 28-day clock, roughly. It's called the infradian cycle, and it is 28 days long. And Basically, at its simplest, you can think of ramping up, ramping down, and resting. So at any moment, a woman is in this ramping up, they're ramping down, and they're resting. And in between the ramping up and down is like this little flow state. So ramp up, flow, ramp down, rest, okay? So there's your four, your four cycles, four phases of a cycle. Alyssa Vitti explains this beautifully in her book, In the Flow. It gets a little bit functional nutrition-y uh, if, if some of this is new. Like she gets into physiology. She gets into your biology in a way that I think is very accessible. But if you're not gonna read the book, hear me right now. We live in a world and I, I, perp I took myself out of corporate, right? I'm like, this isn't working for me. I feel crazy. I am leaving my career and going into my business. I did that in 2018. And as much as it's like this girl boss power move, maybe, I don't even know if people think that, but it was really a lot of necessity from a health standpoint because the normal wasn't working, right? Like go show up, work, here's your vacation days, whatever. This is not working. This was not working. And I am here to say... Linda Andrews in the flesh. This is not working. And we have women and those identifying biologically female that have these four phases in a month that hormonally they're going to be in any different headspace. And every day is going to look different. And this is so beautiful, but they are being invited to fit into a 24 hour workday cycle. And the same day, the same day, the same day, right? Time management, routine, everything is like, hey, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. It is not. And I think for me, a lot of what I read in this book, it was like awakening within me intuitively of like, yeah, like I, some days wake up at five, some days wake up at eight. I, some days do a killer hit workout. I, some days need to rest all week. Like, and it's okay. And what I notice can happen is this shame and this, uh, like, I want, I want to be on a routine. I want to be on the routine. I want to strive and be on the routine. And it just may not work. So there is an invitation to be on a schedule that works for you. And I get it. You may not have the luxury with your exact life right now to say, like, fuck it, I'm going to start my business. Or you may, right? Like, it, that's a whole other episode that wasn't really a luxury. Uh, it was a shit show and took me to today to feel not so shit showish about it all, uh, which is three years later. So, this cycle, she calls this her cycle syncing method, which you're welcome to learn about, but think of ramp up, plat or ramp up, be in the flow, ramp down, rest. As men relating to women, if you're feeling frustrated, if emotions are flying, if you're not getting it, 
like put this in your toolkit. Oh, wow. I have a 24 hour clock that my days are pretty consistent. And when I like overdo stress, say every day for three months, I need to rest or I get sick or whatever. Women's bodies are processing different. There's a lot of reasons why there's a lack of research on all this because a lot of research happens to be done for men. And I want to say this, Biohacking is so cool, right? But a lot of the biohacking is even set up for men. If you don't know about biohacking, it's like optimizing your nutrition, your sleep, your fitness. Uh, it's not that women can't do it. It's just that hormonally and with all of those biological systems, it may need to look a little different. So I'm not going to spend any more time here, although I would love to. But if you can take these principles of cycle sinking into your life as, as women and into your life as men relating to women, this is the fucking missing key. Oh my gosh. This is the missing key because we want to empower all these women in the workforce and get into the leadership positions and whatever. And like all the research about how women mitigate risk and they're better investors. And I mean, there's just so much women are amazing, right? We know this and men are amazing and they're amazing for a lot of different reasons. And they're amazing for a lot of the same reasons, but this truth around women's hormones and creating, talk about a safe space, a safe space for a woman to be wherever they are in their cycle, for them to be able to get the adequate amount of rest, especially as they're coming towards the end of that 28 day cycle or beginning, depending on how you view cycles, um, I think is critical to the well being of everyone. And shout out to the moms out there, because if you are not cycle sinking, I imagine that it feels like a little bit of the struggle bus. And even if you're cycle sinking, like you're a mom, like moms are awesome. Dads are awesome. Women's also have this hormonal load. Okay. So women are managing their hormones with this ever fluctuating monthly system with say their kids and their job and their partner and et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot. So I want to just give a big shout out to the moms out there that especially having hormonal imbalance and just fucking like survival mode, like shout out to you and shout out to being open and receptive to maybe being in a different relationship to your hormones. Uh, husbands, men, empower your partners, women, empower your friends, empower your lovers, empower each other to be aware of this a magical, amazing, magical, powerful system of the hormones and being able to relate to them differently. So currently I'm on uh, my 30 day magnesium challenge because 90% of humans are magnesium deficient. We'll get into that in a few episodes down the road. Uh, but that's been really transformational and just being in this cycle sinking method, ramp up, flow, ramp down, rest, freaking powerful stuff. Okay. We're going to come to a close, but one of the power most powerful questions that has come through for me over the past year and a half is I would have a lot of anxiety bubble up. I'd have a lot of fear bubble up. And I got myself to this place of this question. What can I do right now? What can I do right now? And if ever you're feeling disempowered, you can shift the energy into what can I do right now? And it may be rest. It may be stop thinking about this. It may be go for a walk. It may be take radical action to whatever it is causing you anxiety. It could be so many things, but what can I do right now? And I want to end reiterating this training that <clears throat> I had the opportunity to sit in on uh, with Dr. Edith Ubuntu, uh, inner training for freedom lovers. If you're familiar with David Hawkins' scale of consciousness, this scale, again, is transformational. Energies under 200 are disempowering. Energies above 200 are empowering. Empowering energies lead to creation, disempowering energies lead to destruction. And we see this, right? We see this expressed. When I first saw this scale, I was like, oh, whoa, okay, I get it. But the way Edith presented this, they've actually been able to quantify the energies of the empowering and disempowering energies. And when you are able to step into the energetic frequencies above 200, you are actually 
able to offset the energies below 200. And this, my friends, is this shift of consciousness, right? And so when you're sitting there, I told the story about one night, like Brendan and I had a funny exchange and I was like, not today, not today. I am shifting consciousness. So the above 200, 200 courage, then you go to neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason, love, joy, peace, enlightenment, emotional states, affirmation, trust, optimization, forgiveness, understanding, reverence, serenity, bliss, ineffable. At 700, you just kind of turn into, I think, like a floating like light being or something. But uh, below 200, these are feelings like humiliation, blame, despair, regret, anxiety, craving, hate, scorn, and the name of the level, pride, anger, desire, fear, grief, apathy, guilt, shame. So below 200, disempowering, above 200, empowering, she shares in this, when you are in these energy levels of above 300, one individual at 300 counterbalances 90,000 humans below 200. Okay. 300, that is being in a state of willingness and optimism, counterbalancing people that are in these energies of lack, pride, scorn, hate, right? Fear. Okay. Once you start climbing up this energy scale, when you get up to 400, so when you're hanging out at an energy of reason and understanding, you're counterbalancing 400,000 people. When you get to a level of 500, you're counterbalancing the energy. When you're in love and reverence, you're counterbalancing 750,000 humans below 200. I'm going to do two more. So 600, this starts to pick up exponentially. When you are in a state of peace, so when you are in your meditation practice, when you are in bliss, you are offsetting 10 million humans at these lower energy states. And when you ascend, when you become an ascended master and you are hanging out in enlightenment and are in the space of pure consciousness, you have transformed 70 million individuals. So this is powerful. I want to do like 15 math problems right now, and I'm not going to, but when you just let this click, like, oh, wow, <laughs> as a change maker, as an activist, me being in integrity with my emotional state is ripple effects. I don't know. Do you have a following of 10 million people? Probably not. I don't. Uh, do I have a following of 750,000 or 400,000? Nope, nope, nope. But what I do have <laughs> is the impact to manage my state and radically transform the planet when I'm in that state. Holy cow, this is amazing work. So I close today sharing my transformation and consciousness that is ever continuing, uh, sharing humbly what I've just gone through over the past uh, 12 to 18 months. There's a lot more that was a uh, part of that experience, uh, but this is the cliff notes version. This is the version that I hope you found little tidbits and nuggets that really land. Maybe there's someone that in your life needs to hear this. Maybe they're stuck in a few things. Uh, the last thing I am fangirling Michael Beckwith so hard right now. Uh, he I grew up in traditional church service. I, I do not actively go to a Lutheran church today, uh, but I am, and I, I love God. I love faith. I love my practices, but that just hasn't felt energetically resonant and I don't go. And what I have been doing for about two months and last week, no joke, listen to Michael Beckwith's sermon seven times because I am talking about this energetic empowering states. This man embodies that. And uh, he certainly becomes spirit filled. And it is just a reminder of the oneness of the human experience of how each of us are unique, beautiful little butterflies that have to just own being each of us to the fullest. And that is the transformation. So uh, many, 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 many infinite blessings to you. So, so much love. Keep going onward and upward. We have some powerful shows coming, like I said. Please share, like, review. We appreciate so much the love here at Leo Life. If you want to poke around on our website, shoot us an email, get on the reviews, uh, 
find us on social. We, we love to be in the flow, sharing, growing, spreading this goodness of empowerment. Uh, keep on. So, and remember cycle syncing. Alrighty. Have a powerful day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Leela Life Show. Be sure to share, like, and comment. Tune in next week. And if you're not already a member of the Leela Life Collective, you'll want to be. So take a look in the show notes and be sure you sign up today. Have a beautiful day.